This little lecture of five slides finishes up the microbial diversity, nitrogen, and carbon cycle lectures. I wanted to add this now so that you had it for the whole weekend and you could use it to prepare for the next exam. So we are talking about methanotrophs and methanotrophs. These are organisms that oxidize methane and other C1 molecules as electron donors in energy metabolism and they're also able to use these C1 molecules as carbon sources. They're again another form of very interesting and unusual metabolism is all you if all you've thought about is eukaryotic metabolism. These are typically proteobacteria and they will grow by aerobic respiration. They are using oxygen as the terminal electron acceptor. One thing that's really interesting is they have internal sterile containing membranes and these will house the machinery for respiration. So they again, they have these internal membranes just like some of the nitrifying bacteria. So aerobic methane oxidation, again, you have a very similar thing, NADH, right? Going to flavoprotein, going to quinone, cytochrome B, cytochrome C, cytochrome A is the terminal oxidase, etc. So it's very similar, the electron transport chain, to what you've seen before. Now the big difference is that they use a different set of things to get their NADH. And that's they use methane and methane monooxygenase that uses oxygen and they turn methane into methanol. They take, they then oxidize it again to make an aldehyde and that can then go to cell carbon or they can extract electrons from it, make CO2 and then use those electrons in the classic electron transport chain that you've seen before. You make a proton gradient and then ATP from that. Now, that's aerobic methane oxidation, but there's also anaerobic methane oxidation. If you look at the electron tower again and you look at methanol oxidation to CO2, you see it has a very high electron potential. If, so again, in this case, since we're adding electrons and making methane, a negative electron potential. It can donate to oxygen for lots of energy, but it can also donate to nitrate or nitrite, and you'll see that you get lots of energy from this. So nitrate or nitrite should be nearly as good as oxygen, and we should be able to find these. And surprise, surprise, if there's an electron gradient that can give you energy, microorganisms use it. And these are nitrite-dependent anaerobic methane oxidation as an example, or NDAMO. So in 2010, a bacterium was found in an anoxic sediment that could do this. It's called methylomirabilis oxyfera. It uses methane as a carbon and energy source, and it uses nitrite as an electron acceptor, not oxygen. So let's look at the electron transport chain and carbon flow in this unique organism. First of all, the thing to notice is that it's pretty similar to aerobic methane oxidation, except you start with nitrite. The first thing you do is you run it through nitrite reductase to give you nitrous oxide. And then you take two nitrous oxide and you run it through nitric oxide dismutase. And this splits it into nitrogen gas and oxygen. The nitrogen gas is released. And now we're right back to the same process that the aerobic meth methane oxidizers use, right? You go through a particulate methyl monooxygenase, then you go through a methanol dehydrogenase, right? So you make from methane, you make methanol. Methanol dehydrogenase gives you formaldehyde. This can go through the membrane, it comes inside. Now you have a choice. You can use the formaldehyde to make, create your cell carbon, or you can extract the electrons from it make formate and then CO2, and then use those electrons in a classic electron transport chain that you've seen before, and we've played this game with one important difference. The cytochrome BC1 complex doesn't then donate them to a terminal oxidase. Instead, it gives them back to nitrite reductase, which then uses them to reduce more nitrite, and this happens in the periplasm. Okay. That's it for these lectures. 
we've looked at a diversity of organic carbon metabolism. And let me again stress to you, the big difference between microorganisms is their metabolism. You can begin with proteins, polysaccharides, nucleic acids, or lipids, and take those and break them down into monomers. We looked at leg lignin degradation. We looked at cellulose degradation. Those monomers then run through central metabolism and they're used for carbon assimilation and energy metabolism. We also talked about how organic acids in fermentations can then be used, aromatic compounds, linear hydrocarbons, lots of other stuff can be used. Those can be run through central metabolism, give you the same thing. We've also talked about examples of chemolithal autotrophs that can use CO2, hydrogen gas, methane, etc., etc., and from that create everything they need in central metabolism and go through carbon assimilation and energy metabolism. Okay, that's it.